Hello and welcome everyone to Scientists in Action Discovering Teen Rex. I'm your host Kate from the Denver Museum of Nature and Science, where we are in fact filming live. We're just in a behind the scenes area that not many people get to see. So we have a very special treat for you. We also have a couple scientists and some amazing fossils that we're going to talk about today. But before we get our program kicked off, a couple housekeeping items I want to take care of. First and foremost, if you're on camera school, I'm gonna ask that you stay muted with your camera off until we're ready for you in about 15 or so minutes. If you are not gonna be on camera and you have questions for our scientists, I love it. We have an open chat. So you can be adding those questions to the chat throughout the program and we'll make sure that our friends get them. On that note, I would love to introduce you to Natalie Toad and Alex Polich. Maybe if you wanna tell us a little bit, what do you do here at the museum as well as what this really cool space is that we're in. So take it away. Awesome, thanks Kate. So hi, my name is Natalie Toth. I am the Chief Fossil Reparator here at the Denver Museum of Nature and Science. And for my job, it really has two parts to it. The first part is I get to go out to the field with people like Alex and volunteers and interns and collect fossils, bring them back here to some of our lab spaces at DMNS and work with special tools and equipment to clean them, stabilize them, and then get them ready for putting on in an exhibit or doing research or using them for education, just like this. Yeah, so my name is Alex. Um, I'm a fossil preparator here at the Denver Museum and I work on Teen Rex. Um, and right now we are coming to you from our big bone lab. It's a behind the scenes lab here um, where we prepare our really big fossils, um, kind of like Teen Rex. Um, but before we get into too much of that story today, we have a few questions for you guys. We do, we have some poll questions to trick you with. No, hopefully not. We just want to see how, how much you already know, and it's a great way to engage. So we want you to think about how big do you think an adult T-Rex is? Is it the same length as 40 terrifying boa constrictors? That's a lot of snakes. Um, the same length as a school bus, perhaps, that you ride into school. Is it the same length as a football field or equal to 20 people? So go ahead and we've got a timer for you. All right, and let's see how our friends have done. And it looks like, oh, by and large, folks have said the same length as a school bus, but we do have a couple of responses for 20 people. What's the right answer? How long is an adult T-Rex? Yeah, great job, everyone. So um, an adult T-Rex is the same length from the tip of its nose to the tip of its tail as a school bus, so about 40 feet long, which is pretty huge. That is terrifying. <laughs> School buses seem much safer to me. Um, all right, we've got another poll question. So despite the name, T-Rex is not a lizard. Instead, their closest li living relatives are crocodiles, birds, Komodo dragons, lemurs, or sharks. Go ahead and take a guess. Alrighty, and let's go ahead and see how our friends have done. We have one guess for crocodiles, but by and large, everyone has said birds. Um, Y'all, this is like the exact same responses that we had at our last session. Mm -hmm. So interesting. What's the right answer? Who are they related to? Yeah, so T-Rex is most closely related to birds. Good job, everyone. Yeah, so um, it kind of gives a new meaning to, to dino nuggets. But when you see chickens today, um, you can think of, of T-Rex. Nice, gnarly. <laughs> I will never eat a dino nuggy in this little way again. All right, one last question for you. And it's specific to the dinosaur we're talking about today. 
This particular T-Rex is special because A, it is not often we get to find teenage dinosaurs, B, it was found by kids, C, it's remarkably complete for a dino find, or D, all the above. Now that the music's gone, Natalie's going to sing for you all. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> all righty. Let's go ahead and in that poll and see how our friends did. Ooh, okay. We've got one answer for not often that we find teenage dinosaurs, ones that it's found by kids, but most of the people said all the above. So what is so special about Teen Rex? Tell us. Uh, so yeah, every, I mean, all of the answers are correct. And this is a really exciting fossil discovery for all of those reasons that were listed on the screen. It was just a discovery made by kids. It's a teenager dinosaur, which is pretty interesting. Um, and so we're excited to share with you guys a little bit more all about that. Cool. And that was our last poll, right, Kate? All mm -hmm. right. So I would love to share with you guys a little bit more about the history of discovery of this amazing fossil that we call Teen Rex. So back in 2022, uh, our curator of paleontology here, Dr. Tyler Leeson, got a text message from one of his high school friends with some pictures of chips of bone, fossil bone, coming out of a hill in the Badlands in North Dakota. So our team last summer went up to go look at these chips and chunks of bone. And sure enough, as we started uncovering all of the uh, pieces and parts, it turned out to be not just any old dinosaur, not just any old chips or chunks of bone, but it turned out to be a T-Rex, which was so remarkable and such an exciting discovery. I think we actually have a photo even, or the photo that, that Dr. Leeson received, right? Is it like a yeah. kid laying next to it a bone? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, perfect. If we pull that photo up, it's pretty neat. It should be Liam. Yeah, so there's one of the young boys that had uh, made the initial discovery a couple of years ago, and he's laying next to the shin bone of this dinosaur, this teen Rex. And when we first saw pictures of this, you know, it's hard to tell exactly what kind of dinosaur this was at the time. And so, you know, as we get out to the site and continue to dig and dig right by all of uh, these pieces of fossil bone, one of the things that clued us into it being a T-Rex was the super sharp teeth that we started to uncover in the field. And I know we also have a picture of maybe what some of those teeth look like. Oh yeah, there it is. So it may be a little tricky to see, but where the front of the brush is, there's a piece of the front of the dinosaur's jaw and then you'll see a few little pieces that look like kind of black rocks almost that are right above where the handle of the paintbrush is. And those are all of the teeth poking out of the rock from this teenage T-Rex. So you can imagine how exciting our crew was, how excited the boys were, how excited everybody was that we had just uncovered this really spectacular meat-eating dinosaur. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, it was a really good time out in the field. It took us about 11 days to um, excavate this whole dinosaur. Um, and we collected it in what we call a big field jacket. Um, and so when you find a dinosaur, um, the first step is to kind of figure out where all of the bones are in the dirt. Um, and then we use tools like shovels and picks and we trench around it um, so that it's all sitting up on a pedestal, kind of like you can see in the picture here. Um, so that was our Teen Rex pedestal, um, all ready to be wrapped up and brought back here to Denver. And that's our intern, Aiden Skelly, there next to it. Um, and our next step is to, to cover it in plaster and burlap, um, which is kind of like if you have to get a cast on your arm, that's what that, that plaster is. So I think we have a, a picture of this all wrapped up. So there it is, ready to, to get flipped over. And Natalie can tell you more about how we <laughs> flipped this and brought it back here to, to Denver. Yeah, so, you know, when we uncovered all of the pieces and parts of this dinosaur skeleton, we worked to kind of outline the general shape of uh, the dinosaur's body when it's in the ground, and that's what's encased in this plaster jacket that you see here. And we estimate that this thing weighed about 6,000 pounds, um, so it was a little too heavy for us to just lift with uh, people power. 
So what was really exciting is we were able to call in the help of a Black Hawk helicopter. And here's a photo of that. And you can see it's a flying dinosaur. So we have the field jacket in the helicopter net there being carried off the top of the hill out in the Badlands of North Dakota. And the helicopter was able to fly it onto a trailer that was parked nearby. And from there, we drove it back to the Denver Museum and brought it into our Team Rex lab. And Alex has had the privilege of working on that fossil since it's been back. Yeah, so for the past three months, my job has been working on this teen rex to, to figure out all the fossils that we have in there. Um, so when we were collecting it out in the field, we were able to identify um, a lot of bones, um, which are the ones that I have colored in in blue here in my diagram. So we knew that we had the hips, um, a leg, and part of the, the lower jaw when we were collecting this. Um, but as I've been using my different tools, like one that I have to my right here, um, I've been able to find even more. So um, this tool is called an air scribe. It's kind of like a, a miniature jackhammer. Um, so it's hooked up to an air compressor. And so air goes through this long black tube here um, and vibrates the tip. Um, really, really fast, and it helps me to break up all of the rock in the jacket, all 6,000 pounds of it, um, and find the fossils underneath. And I actually have a few of those fossils today, which are, are pretty cool. Um, so we saw that there were definitely teeth out in the quarry when we were collecting this dinosaur, but I have just continued to find more and more. Um, so this here is actually a box of T-Rex teeth. Um, so all of these had fallen out of the jaw and were sticking in the, out in the dirt. Um, and we think they're from the upper right side of the T-Rex jaw. And we can see all different shapes and sizes in here, like this really big one here um, is from the, the front of the mouth of the dinosaur, um, or maybe like this tiny little one here, um, which is, is so cute. Um, I actually have another tooth here from Teen Rex, and I have a question for all of you guys about this tooth. Um, so I want you to make an observation about this. Um, so if we look really, really closely, um, we can see that there's a section of this tooth that's a lighter color and a section that's a darker color. Um, and I think we also have a picture of this tooth um, that we can look at a little bit closer. Um, but I'm curious as to why you guys think there might be two different colors on this tooth, or why is there that color change there? And you can go ahead and type that into your chat and make your, make your guesses. That's a great question. So students, teachers, however you have those computers set up, you can go ahead and be adding your guesses to the chat. Why do you think that tooth is two different colors? All right, we have somebody says the meat it eats. Um, ooh, because the tooth broke off and then grew back. That's a new one. That's cool. Maybe it was under the gum. The tooth had less erosion. Uh, we think there are two different colors because the teen rex is rare. Maybe it's from something it was eating or what was decaying. Um, another broke off, it grew again. It has been in the dirt for so long. The aging of the tooth, ooh, because of dried blood on there. So mm -hmm. what's the right answer? Yeah, I'm loving all of these answers. You guys are really thinking like scientists. Um, so someone actually got the right answer. That that color difference shows where the gum line is of the dinosaur. Um, so all that dark brown at the, at the back of the tooth here would have been um, in the root. Um, and then that, that color change there is where the gums would have been. So this portion here um, is what the T-Rex would have been using to eat um, triceratops and duck-billed dinosaurs. Um, something that's also really cool about T-Rex teeth is they have these little bumps on them called serrations. And so T-Rex, um, their teeth are kind of like saws or a steak knife, and they those bumps help them to, to shred up all of the meat that they were eating. Um, now, one of the answers you guys also mentioned uh, was about erosion or about maybe wear and tear on T-Rex teeth. Um, Natalie, do you want to talk about this, this tooth here? <laughs> I would love to. This, um, what's really special, so Alex was showing us that we have a tooth here from a teenage dinosaur. And this tooth that's in my other hand is from what we think is an adult dinosaur. And it might be kind of tricky to see here on camera. And maybe even if I turn like this, you might be able to see the distance or the, the size difference between these two teeth. And so this one is really sharp, it's narrower, it's smoother, versus this tooth is a little more robust. And it actually has this really interesting kind of what we call a wear facet on the top of the tooth right here. 
And that tells us that this tooth was around in the T-Rex's mouth for a long, long time before it fell out. This is the wear and tear that this dinosaur endured while it was eating things like Alex had mentioned, Triceratops, the duckbill dinosaur, Edmontosaurus. And so it's really cool, really fun to find things like this that show us uh, exactly what kind of lifestyle this dinosaur was living and what it was eating right before it died. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, so Natalie kind of touched on it and we also talked about it in our poll earlier. So one of the reasons that Teen Rex is so special is because it's a juvenile or a teenager dinosaur. Um, so we think that this dinosaur might have been between 13 and 15 years old when it died. Um, and the way that, that we're currently inferring that age is based off the size of the shin bone or the tibia. Um, so we compare that size of the, the Teen Rex shin to adult T. rexes um, and we can kind of backtrack it on what's called a growth curve to estimate the age. Um, but eventually I'll be doing something um, that'll help us to, to prove it a little, a little more science. Um, so we'll be doing histology, which is where we actually will cut a piece out of the, the shin bone, um, which I have um, a bone over here that we've actually cut a chunk out of. Um, you can kind of see the, the hole in this bone here. Um, and so we're able to, to cut a chunk out of it there, um, and we're able to look at that chunk, um, so kind of like this one here. And similar to how um, trees, if you cut them down, they might have something called growth rings in them. Um, dinosaur leg bones will, will get the same thing. So this is a chunk here, and um, you might be able to see different different lines in here. Um, and so we're able to count those lines and those will tell us how old a dinosaur is. So um, if there's 13 lines, maybe it was 13 years old. So we'll be doing that with Teen Rex very soon. I still have to uncover the tibia. There's a lot of prep left to do um, on that dinosaur because it's a, a pretty big dinosaur and a really um, large amount of dirt in there. <laughs> Well, yeah, one of the things that is so special about teenage dinosaurs is that we find very, very few of them. So there have been dozens and dozens of T-Rex specimens that have been collected over the last, you know, several centuries. And, you know, a lot of these dinosaurs, we think, are probably pretty close to full-grown size, full-grown adults. And there's only maybe four or five kind of sub-adult or teenage teen rexes that have ever been uncovered. And so this specimen that Alex is working on here at the Denver Museum is really spectacular in that it's going to help to kind of fill in the timeline of what a dinosaur, how a dinosaur grows from being a little hatchling T-Rex all the way up through its big adult size when it's about, you know, 25 to 30 years old. Absolutely. Now we've talked a lot about T-Rex, um, but when prepping out this jacket, there's also been a lot of other cool fossils in there, um, like plant fossils. So I think we have a picture of it. Um, there's actually a palm frond or a palm tree leaf um, that's right next to the, the Teen Rex jaws. So it's really cool to have both plant and dinosaur fossils in here um, because it tells us a lot about what the environment looked like 67 million years ago when this dinosaur was alive. Um, so there's that palm frond and there's there's been more leaves in there as well. Um, yeah, and here's an amazing picture of, of what the Hell Creek or what North Dakota looked like um, back when the dinosaurs were alive. So we can see um, T-Rex here and some um, ornithomimids in the back there, which have the feathers on them um, and a really cool ankylosaur at the front here. But it was a, a really nice tropical oasis, um, which is one of the reasons why we get a lot of fossils from that area. Cool. I guess one of the last things I'll mention is that, um, you know, T-Rex was walking around in this beautiful landscape that would have looked a lot like kind of the Mississippi Bayou back 67 million years ago. So think of kind of like the Gulf Coast where we have things like really lush palm trees and all different kinds of vegetation, much different than the dirt and sand badlands that we'd seen photos of earlier. Um, and we've, you know, the Hell Creek Formation is the name of this rock unit that's produced all of these incredible fossils like T-Rex and also some of the other kind of friends or creatures that lived alongside it. So yeah, here's a great photo of what North Dakota looks like today, right? You look around the landscape, I don't see any palm trees. <laughs> I don't see any, you know, turtles walking around in this landscape. Um, so things look, have changed very, very much in the last 67 million years. Uh, but on this landscape, you know, if we go back in time to when T-Rex was walking around, we have other animals that we find in these badlands alongside dinosaurs like T-Rex. So if we can take a peek on the table here, 
uh, right up in the front, we have this really beautiful series of what we call caudal vertebrae. So these are all from the tail of a duckbill dinosaur called Edmontosaurus. But this fossil is so special because we found all of these fossils kind of intact or preserved all together in the order and orientation in which they would have been in the dinosaur's tail when it was alive. So we get really excited when we find things like this that are still in their life position. Um, and one other thing I'd love to point out that's on the table, we talk a lot about dinosaur fossils, but it wasn't just dinosaurs on the landscape. There were other critters out there too. So I, I'm gonna pick up this specimen here and I'm actually gonna ask you all, and maybe Kate can help me out here. Mm -hmm. I'm holding a specimen that kind of looks like a big, I don't know, brown shiny dinner plate. And I'm wondering <laughs> if you guys have any guesses as to what this could be from. Yes, who did this belong to? In the chat, go ahead and make a guess. We got turtle shell, turtle, <laughs> another turtle shell. <laughs> Is it a turtle shell? Turtle shell. <laughs> yes, lots of turtles. Okay, I'm gonna be so devastated if it's not turtle. Is it a turtle? No, you guys are way too smart. So of course, this is a fossil turtle shell, um, but it's fun to think about all of these different critters that would have been walking around kind of at the feet of dinosaurs as they were walking around on the landscape 67 million years ago. So great job, this is a fossil turtle. I love that, that is so cool. Okay, we're gonna invite our on-camera school to go ahead and join us at this point because we can't wait to hear your questions next. So if we could go ahead and have our friends from, let's see, Garden County Schools. If you wanna go ahead and unmute and turn your camera on, we'll be able to hear and see you in the lab and then hear your questions. Alrighty. Hi, good to see you. Alrighty, and my request of you is just because obviously we are kind of far away and we're in this back lab. When you have a question, if you wanna walk up to the computer and ask nice and loud, we'll be able to hear it better. So what questions do you have for our scientists today? Why do the dinosaur teeth go down in the soil? Ooh. Why do the dinosaur teeth go down in the soil? Yeah, so I think you're probably talking about that picture we saw earlier with all the teeth in a row. Um, and so when we find fossils, a lot of the time, um, most of the dinosaur will be completely covered in dirt. And that's how um, we're able to, to find these fossils and how they stay safe for those millions and millions of years before we find them. So this is actually um, after we've kind of explored around that leg bone we found at first and, and dug pretty deep into the ground. Actually, I think we had to dig about six feet to find these teeth. Um, and so when, when dinosaurs become fossils, they get covered in lots of um, sand or mud, um, and they stay in the rock layers for, for a really long time, and the, the bones get replaced by the minerals in the, in the dirt. So that's where, that's where we find those bones is in the, the dirt or the soil. <laughs> oh, very cool. I also didn't realize you had to dig six feet for it. That's impressive. Those bones do get kind of spread out, so mm. that would be a great way why those teeth would be down in the dirt. So. What's another question from the classroom? How many dinosaurs eat meat? Ooh, how many <laughs> dinosaurs eat meat? Oh my if goodness. You don't have a specific number. Yeah, and I don't have a specific number at the tip of my brain right now. Um, but what's really cool about meat eating dinosaurs is that they've been around for a really, really long time. So we're talking about our T-Rex fossil here, which is 67 million years old. And meat-eating dinosaurs have been around since about 210 million years ago. So that's a long, long history of meat-eating dinosaurs. So we've had them come in all different shapes and sizes. So, you know, back 210 million years ago, they're kind of just little meat-eating dinosaurs about the size of a small house cat or a small dog. And then they've evolved over, you know, over a hundred million years to become the apex predator that is T-Rex that everyone knows and loves today. So that's a great question. Very cool. I challenge you to explore and see how many meat eating dinosaurs you can think of. And then email us because I want to know the answer. <laughs> What's another question from the classroom? Um, 
How many fossils do T. rexes have? Oh, how many yeah. fossils? Or many are you bones. wondering how many bones maybe they have? I'm wondering Close how up. many teeth. Oh, how many teeth? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. So um, it can kind of vary a little bit, but they typically have like 30 to 40 teeth in their mouth. Um, T-Rex, right now, we can see the, the side of the face and it has um, 13 teeth in the side on the lower side and 13 on the, the upper left side. Um, so quite, quite a few teeth. Um, they were really um, good at hunting other dinosaurs. And so they had lots of really sharp teeth that were, were deeply rooted. Um, but I think T-Rex in total has like over 300 bones. Um, so they have lots and lots of bones in their head and in their back and chest. Um, so it's a, it's a lot of bones to, to find. And here's a, a picture of of me about to be eaten by uh, teen rex. So you can see the, the lower jaw and the upper jaw and part of the skull there as well, um, which were surprises for us when we were prepping this out, which um, we're very happy surprises. <laughs> very one, excited to find those. One thing I wanna highlight in that photo too, is it looked like some of the teeth were maybe smaller than others. Mm -hmm. Do T-Rexes lose their teeth like humans do? They do, but what's really cool is that, you know, we lose our teeth once and get one new set of teeth and T-Rex can do, uh, have multiple sets of teeth throughout its entire lifetime. And one other cool thing that I'd love to add to what Alex was talking about is that the number of teeth that Tyrannosaurs have in their jaws, it actually helps us figure out where they go on the dinosaur family tree. Mm -hmm. So T-Rex has a very set number, well, uh, we think it has a very set number of teeth compared to other tyrannosaurs that may have been around during a similar time period. So the no that's a really good question that was asked. I feel like the number of teeth is something that's actually really, really important for researchers working on these fossils today. Totally. Very cool. Dino dentists, <laughs> keeping them in business. All right, what's another question from the classroom? How many fossils are there in the world? Oh, how oh many fossils are goodness. in the world? Again, a number question. Now, wow. for sure, has the answer. Yeah. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, that's such a tricky question to answer because you know we're showing you fossils mostly of dinosaurs and things that were alive alongside T. Rex. But a fossil is any living animal that was once alive on the Earth that has now become you know fossilized or turned to rock over millions or hundreds of millions or sometimes even billions of years. So if we think about, you know, the age of the earth is 4.6 billion years old. The first living organisms on earth show up about 3 billion years ago. So from 3 billion years ago to now, to know how many things have become fossilized or how many things were alive, I'd say it's almost impossible to make a good guess. But yeah, another good thing to ask Google, I suppose. I <laughs> well, and to challenge your thinking too, uh, you know, sometimes fossils are surprising and that a lot of the fossils we find are, are like trace fossils. So it's not the actual bone that people are finding, it's like a footprint, right? right. And if you think about it, dinosaurs only had one body, but they probably made millions of footprints over their lives. Mm -hmm. So you might be more likely to find like a footprint or like a, a burrow where they maybe something lived than the actual dinosaur itself. Or seashells or, I mean, every, you think about it on all different levels, right? We have big giant dinosaurs, we have little turtles, we have little seashells, little snails, plants and leaves and grasses and all different kinds of critters. So yeah. great question, but. We have time too. We have a, Kate was talking about trace fossils, like footprints. Um, and we have another example of, of a trace fossil here on our table. Um, so you might be able to see this kind of weird texture on here. Um, and I'm curious as to what kind of fossil do you guys think this is? Ooh, this sounds mm -hmm. like another opportunity to type in the chat. <laughs> what do you think we're looking at here? Yes. What is this pattern here? What left this pattern? Okay, we've got a fish. We have footprint. We have scales. Someone definitively says those are scales. <laughs> beehive. Ooh, I like that answer too. Plants. More beehives. Ooh, armadillo. Oh, armadillos are awesome, awesome, by the way. Fossilized beehive, snake scales, dino foot, lots of beehives. Okay, what's the answer? Yeah, these are all great 
great guesses. I heard scales. Um, so you're right, this is um, the skin or skin impression of a dinosaur um, from a duckbill dinosaur, actually, like a Montosaurus that lived at the, the same time as T-Rex. So these show all of the little scales that the, the dinosaur had. So it's really cool to see um, how different dinosaurs will have like different um, textures and patterns on their skin and, and look at what their skin might have looked like. Cool. We got to see so much cool stuff from that. All right. Let's get more questions from the classroom. How many bones are in a T-Rex? Ooh, how many bones are in a T-Rex? I think you mentioned this one earlier, but yeah. there was an actual number for it. What is yeah, it? it's a, about 300. So um, we can kind of look at the diagram here to my left. There's lots and lots of bones on here. Um, you can see like all of these different spine bones in here and neck bones. Um, and they also had um, lots of different bones in their head and in their leg. Um, and something also really cool I wanna point out, I actually found a couple little rib bones um, a couple weeks ago when I was digging in here. So um, T-Rex like us, they had ribs in their chest connected to their back, um, but they also had ribs in their belly um, to support their big bodies and also in their neck. Um, and so I'm trying to figure out right now where um, the ribs that I found in that that pile of dirt might go in the T-Rex body? That's a good question. Okay, I have a bone question. Mm -hmm. This is not a student question, but <laughs> it's interesting. Let's zoom in on its little face really quick. What is this little round bone that looks almost like an eye? Um, the oh, <laughs> um, I think Do you're probably talking those? about that. Uh, yeah, so that's actually um, just from the, the artist indicating where, where the eyeball would be. It's not oh. actually, oh, um, yeah, but that is where, where the eyeball would be. But you might notice there's lots of, of holes in the in the T-Rex head here that eyeballs don't go in. So um, it's cool to see the, the different shapes. And sometimes that can tell us um, what type of dinosaur it is um, or sometimes what it's closely related to which is, is pretty cool. Cool. Well, bummer that that wasn't a real bone. I'm devastated. No real eyeballs, unfortunately. <laughs> Some <laughs> animals do have almost like a little ocular bone. Yeah. Not us. And apparently not the but <laughs> sad. All right, let's get at least one or two more questions from the classroom. How long are dinosaurs? Adult dinosaurs. How long are adult dinosaurs? Yeah, so if the dinosaur we're talking about is T-Rex, um, T-Rex uh, averages about 40 feet long when it's a full grown adult, or as you may recall from the poll earlier, they can be about as long as a school bus, if not a little longer. Um, but you know, some of the biggest dinosaurs that we have in the fossil record aren't from dinosaurs like meat eating dinosaurs, they're from long neck dinosaurs. So one of the biggest or longest long neck dinosaurs is a dinosaur called Argentinosaurus, which you may have guessed is from Argentina. Um, but that dinosaur would have been several school buses long um, and much, much longer than T-Rex. So although T-Rex is the apex predator of, you know, the end of the Cretaceous 67 million years ago, there are other bigger, longer dinosaurs that were once alive on earth. Very cool. And a quick plug, uh, if you want to learn more about these long neck dinosaurs, we do have a recording on our YouTube channel because we actually broadcasted with these two scientists and one other from this very lab space in February this year. Um, and we'll actually be coming back in February 2025 to talk more about these really big dinosaurs. So it's awesome. Dinosaurs are great. Let's go ahead and get one last question from the classroom and then we'll pull some of those chat questions I see. Um, do dinosaurs lay eggs? Mm. Oh, yeah, tell us about the eggs. What's yeah, going on? Totally. Dinosaurs, um, they did lay eggs, and sometimes we'll actually find dinosaur eggs as fossils. Um, so a few months ago, we actually had some long neck dinosaur eggs that were in our lab that we were working on, which is really, really cool to see, but it can be kind of rare to find dinosaur eggs because eggs are super fragile, right? Um, and it's also fun to think about, um, so dinosaurs are really, really big. Um, so you might think that they lay really big eggs, um, but their eggs actually were, were a little bit smaller. So their, their babies were pretty small too, um, which is, is pretty cute to think about. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I would say if you imagine the size of like a, a grapefruit mm -hmm. um, or a really big orange or something, that's about the size of something like a long neck dinosaur's egg or a meat eating dinosaurs, their eggs are a little more oblong. So they're kind of more of an oval shape, but just like Alex said, they're really tiny and it's pretty remarkable that they grow into these huge giant creatures in a relatively short amount of time. Wow, they would probably have to eat a lot. Oh yeah, to, to grow. Lots <laughs> of triceratops. <laughs> Tiny eggs. That's really cool. Um, all right, so we've got some questions from the chat that I want to throw your way. Um, one is, how do you think the dinosaur was originally buried in soil? I think also, how did it die? Why? Why did we? Why was it in the soil? Tell us about it. Yeah, so the teen rex fossil was what we think buried in an ancient river system. And so it, the way that the bones are laid out in the big field jacket that Alex was talking about and the one that, um, I don't know, maybe we can show the picture of again, if that's possible. So, mm -hmm. you know, we have this really beautiful skull, but also in the same field jacket, we found part of its thigh bone called the femur and part of the lower leg too. But some things that are missing that you'll notice is we don't have any arms, we don't have any pieces of the backbone. Um, and we have very few ribs. And so this tells us, since we're missing some of those things, that they probably got moved away by some type of force, like water. So we think that there was a slow moving river system. There's also lots of sand that is encasing this fossil. And if you've ever been to the rivers around Colorado or even uh, in the American West, and you've walked around in a river, you've probably noticed lots of sand, lots of mud, lots of stones. And those are all the types of rocks that we find this T-Rex buried in. So the rocks give us good clues, the fossil leaves give us good clues, and then the way the skeleton and the bones are preserved also give us good clues about what that environment used to look like. Very cool. So many mysteries to solve in paleontology. <laughs> okay, do you know if teen rex is male or female? No, we don't. Um, it is called the brother. That's what the little boys named it. But we don't know if it's if it's a girl or a boy. Um, it's really, really hard, almost impossible to, to figure out um, the gender or sex of dinosaurs. Um, there's a new science that's coming out that maybe has some theories about using something called medullary tissue, um, which is when um, like T-Rex is about to lay eggs, they'll get this weird tissue that helps increase calcium production um, so that their eggs are nice and reinforced and strong. Um, but it's really rare to find that because you have to find a dinosaur that had that tissue at that time, um, right before it was about to lay eggs. Um, so that can tell you that that was a a female dinosaur, but um, otherwise it's a, still a question that we have and something we're figuring out, but it's it's really hard because we, we just have their bones um, and not really, like if you are looking at like a peacock, for example, the, the males and females look different because of their feathers and we can see the colors. Um, so we don't have a lot of those different ways to, to tell the, the gender apart um, for dinosaurs. And on, I guess on that note, even, um, you know, because we can't, individually like identify the sex or, or male or female of those dinosaurs could we even assume that they looked different I, obviously like some birds look different and mammals might look different mm -hmm. but by and large it it sounds like maybe they even looked the same at least from what we can tell right now yeah yeah, yeah I'm sure it's like how if you were to look at Alex's bones and her body and my bones and my body, our bones probably look nearly identical, but Alex and I standing next to each other, I have blonde hair, she has brunette hair, <laughs> you know, we have different features and there's no way to know that because we don't have things like, you know, feathers or hair or mm -hmm. eye color, things like that preserved in these dinosaurs. Interesting. Maybe someday Maybe one someday. of you <laughs> will solve the mystery. Um, all right. Here's another question from the chat. How do you know which bone goes where, especially if we don't have a full skeleton? That's a great question. <laughs> that is a great question. Um, so what's really lucky for us, especially with a dinosaur that has been as well studied as T-Rex, is that when we find pieces and parts of dinosaurs, we're able to compare them to other dinosaurs that are more complete than the uh, pieces and parts that we have. So even if we have, you know, the top part of an arm bone and it's incomplete, we can compare that top part of an arm bone to maybe another T-Rex that's at another museum or another T-Rex that we have in our collection here at the Denver Museum. So it's just by doing a lot of comparison for, uh, and kind of playing a matching game almost with other dinosaur skeletons that have more of their body parts preserved. Very cool. All right, here's a question about lifespan. Um, and I think you kind of, you touched on this, but you didn't explicitly say that's what you were mentioning earlier, 
but how long could T-Rex hypothetically survive or live? Yeah, so we think that um, T-Rex typically, the oldest that it got was like its early 30s. Um, and one of the ways we know that is like I was showing you guys earlier, those those chunks of bone that we can cut out and count the, the different growth marks or growth lines in there. Um, so having a 13 to 15 year old, um, it's not full size, still just a, a teenager. Getting its driver's permit, mm -hmm. I see. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> All right, here is a question about that kind of jumped up in the chat. Um, all right. Oh, love this. We love this question. We see this every time we do a dinosaur related project. Um, can you find DNA of a dinosaur from a fossil? Unfortunately not. Uh, um, I wish that Jurassic Park could be real, <laughs> <laughs> but, or maybe not because we know how it ends, but I think that, you know, DNA tends to break down and degrade over uh, several hundred thousand years, even a million years in some cases. And because these fossils are 67 million years old, they are much, much too old to preserve any type of DNA evidence or DNA, you know, information that would be preserved in, with the, the bones and the skeleton. So unfortunately, there will be no Jurassic Park in our future <laughs> as of today. Another today. thing that folks can work on and try and find out. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Terrifying, yet maybe exciting. I don't know. Michael Crichton has things to say about it. Um, <laughs> let's talk about dinosaur feathers. Did T-Rex have proto feathers? Um, how do you know that dinosaurs or some of them had feathers? Yeah, so um, we know dinosaurs are related to birds, um, but a more direct way that we know is actually um, there have been some dinosaurs related to T-Rex that were found in Asia, like China, um, and they were preserved with feathers. So they're not actually like 3D feathers, they're kind of just um, impressions, kind of similar to the plant fossils. Um, and so we can actually see the feathers that were on the dinosaurs. Um, we don't actually have any examples of feathers actually on T-Rex. Um, I was kind of hoping I I might find some feathers in in the teen rex jacket um but the t-rex is related to those dinosaurs that we have found feathers on um but with t-rex it's kind of a, a debate between paleontologists on whether it had feathers or not um, because t-rex is really really big and lived in a super hot environment which makes um feathers kind of difficult to have for thermoregulation it could be way too hot for the the dinosaur to be covered in all of these feathers um so we think that maybe when t-rex was little um, like first born, like the size of a house cat that it might have been covered in feathers, um, or that even teen rex might have had feathers, um, but that maybe they were more specialized, kind of like how um, elephants will have hair all over their body, but you can't actually see it because it's kind of wiry and thin. Um, maybe T-Rex feathers were, were the same and um, kind of had that specialized structure so they weren't too hot, but it's still a question we have for sure. Very cool. It is sweet to imagine small T-Rexes, mm. kitties highs <laughs> and covered with feathers. So cute. They probably still have sharp teeth though. Yeah. Um, okay, so here is a question. Oh my goodness, so many are coming in. Okay, I see one about birds. Since we're already talking about feathers, how do we know dinosaurs, namely T-Rex, is related to birds that we have today? Yeah, I think even just looking at the poster that's right behind Alex here, um, you know, this kind of generalized body plan is something that kind of sticks out to me and sticks out to scientists in general, I would say, where if you've ever seen something like an ostrich or an emu walking around, I think about these birds that have these really big, long uh, legs and really big feet and also a relatively large head. And their body plan to me looks really similar to that of, you know, T-Rex that would have been its great, great, great ancestor. And so that's kind of one of the, I don't know, comparisons that I think of when I think of these guys. Yeah, absolutely. There's also a really cool fossil called Archaeopteryx, which is a, a transitional form, which means that it shows us how um, dinosaurs like T-Rex um, turned into birds. So it's kind of that step in between where it's a little bit of a mix of both. So that's um, really good evidence. And it's a really cool fossil. If you get a chance to, to look it up, I encourage you to do so. Very cool. So we don't have a ton of time left. Um, is there anything you would like to leave our students with? Words of wisdom, um, ways that they can also become, you know, involved in museums or fossils or find dinosaurs? 
Yeah, totally. Um, I would say if you're interested in this stuff, um, keep asking questions. Um, Natalie and I studied different things. I studied biology, Natalie studied geology. So if you're interested in plants and animals, um, those are good things to study to, to work with dinosaurs. Um, but even if dinosaurs aren't your thing, stay curious with science. Um, and also if you happen to be out hiking and you find a dinosaur, you can always call us. We'll come help you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think too, you know, Teen Rex is such an incredible story because uh, it wasn't people from a museum and it wasn't folks that were curators or researchers or even, you know, professional scientists that had found this fossil. It was three boys that were out exploring in their backyard, looking for fossils and looking for cool things in nature. So I guess I'd say if you are interested in this type of work, or even if you're interested in just making discoveries in general, Put your phone down and go get outside, play outside, and just stay curious about your backyard and kind of the natural world that's all around us. Very cool. Yeah, this came up earlier in our earlier session, but like the land that these um, boys found the, the dinosaur on was public land. So it wasn't mm -hmm. like they had to go someplace really special that no one else can go. So get outside, uh, stay curious, and see all the things. And then call us when you find that dinosaur because <laughs> I also want to see it. Um, Thank you everyone who asked us questions both on camera and in the chat. We had a ton of questions still left in the chat, which just goes to show how amazing this content is. Um, please research, uh, come visit us at the museum. Let us know what you find, especially if it's that dinosaur um, and stay curious. This has been so fun. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, Riley, who y'all can't see, but they're behind the camera, making sure that today's program happens. And of course, thank you, Alex. And thank you, Natalie. This has been so cool. I know I have a million more questions. Um, I can't wait to see what happens next for Teen Rex. If you enjoyed today's program, I hope you'll come back next month. We have not one, but two scientists in actions. In fact, there was only one mentioned here on screen on October 24th, Brilliant Bats and What They Do, in which we will go behind the scenes to a different lab at the museum and explore zoology and bats. But also on October 8th, we have a really interesting special edition Scientist in Action coming where we'll have four Indigenous female authors. Um, incredible. They're going to talk a lot about kind of their perspective, what it looks like to combine art and science and that writing. And it is going to be so interesting. So teachers, go on our website, register your class, um, investigate further, and we hope to see you again. So we'll see you next time. <laughs>